Hello everyone. Welcome to my new video. So today we shall discuss the balancing of chemical equations. That is in your chapter 1 chemical reactions and equations. So let's start. To represent chemical equation with symbols and formula is called chemical equation. So at first we should know what is this chemical equation? That is to represent a equation or an equation with symbols and formula. So at first let's learn about the following points that we have to keep in our mind for before writing a chemical equation. Number of atoms on both sides of the arrow. That is in the LHS that is in the left hand side of the reaction that is the reactants. That is the reactants. As we all know that if a chemical reaction is carried out the left part we call it as reactants and the right part we call it as products. So the atoms on both the sides that is the reactants and the products should be equal. This we have to balance or we have to check. There should be equal. If not, then we will definitely try to solve it or try to balance it. Second point. Start with maximum number of atoms. So if in both the sides, let's take the example of oxygen atom. Suppose in both the sides, the oxygen atom is, suppose in the reactant, the oxygen atom is 2. Similarly, in the right hand side, the number of oxygen atom is 6. So definitely, suppose this is the highest number. So definitely, we will try to solve at first with the highest number of atoms. That is dif difference in the maximum number of atoms. Third point, mention the symbol for solid, liquid and gas state. Suppose sodium chloride NaCl, sodium chloride NaCl. So if we are adding it into water, what we are doing? We are adding definitely the solid NaCl. So in bracket, we will write S. That is solid for S, L for liquid, G for gas and another thing is there that is aqueous. Now, what does this aqueous means? Suppose I am dissolving the solid sodium chloride into water. As we have already discussed, water means aqua. So, when we are dissolving any solid substance or any substance, solid substance, liquid substance or gaseous substance into water and it is dissolving, it forms aqueous solution. So, when NaCl is dissolved in water, we will call it as aqueous solution of NaCl. Fine. Now we will discuss the fourth point. For evolution of gas, we will use upward arrow and for precipitation, we will add or we will use downward arrow. When we, st uh, when we will start solving the chemical equations, then we will definitely come one by one. The last point is mention the Wait, let me erase this. So the last point is mention the change in heat and catalyst used. So what we will do whenever this heat change is occurring as we have discussed in the change in temperature topic in the previous video that whenever there is change in heat we write plus heat right and this catalyst used we will discuss while solving the chemical equations. So let's move to the next page. As you can see this also we have done this experiment in evolution of gas, then evolution of heat. Okay, this is a very common reaction. That is zinc is reacted with H2SO4 that is sulfuric acid. Now how we will balance this? See, at first let's, let's check for oxygen here. Oxygen is 4 here. Oxygen is 4 here. So oxygen is balanced in both the sides. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is here too. Here also too. So hydrogen is also balanced. Sulfur this side. Sulfur this side. Both sides sulfur atom is 1. It's also balanced. This side zinc. This side zinc. So this chemical equation is already balanced. Is there anything missing? Yes. The symbol and 
the upward arrow upward arrow why because hydrogen is a gas so evolution of gas we use upward arrow so h2so4 is a aqueous solution is an aqueous solution so this h2so4 is aqueous solution plus zn zinc is solid now the reaction is carried out znso4 is aqueous solution because znso4 uh, will be in soluble form right plus hydrogen gas and for this hydrogen gas we will use what upward arrow that is it is indicating that gas has been evolved now let's move to the next page very simple reaction that is hydrogen and oxygen is reacting to form water so let's solve see oxygen is 2 here oxygen is 1 here so definitely we have to balance this how we will balance let's put 2 in front of this h2o so what are this called how can we put this these are actually called as stoichiometric coefficients why these are called stoichiometric coefficients we have learned in our quadratic equations in maths that what are coefficients suppose a x square plus b y square plus 3 z cube suppose this is equals to 0 so as we have known that these are called as coefficients that is this is the coefficient of x square this is the coefficient of b square sorry this is the coefficient of y square this is the coefficient of z cube so these were called as coefficient similarly in case of chemistry or in case of chemical equations these are called as stoichiometric coefficients now if we put two here then what happens always remember that if nothing is written in the subscript that means one so in the subscript if nothing is written we will consider it as one and we will multiply the stoichiometric coefficient with this subscript so oxygen is two into one equals to two this side also oxygen is 2 okay similarly if no co uh, stoichiometric coefficient is mentioned it means 1 so 2 into 1 2 so this side also oxygen becomes 2 this side also oxygen becomes 2 now check for hydrogen 2 into 2 is 4 but this side it is only 2 so we will add a 2 in front of it we will add a 2 in front of it so what is the outcome 2H2 plus 1O2 or simply O2 forms 2H2. Now what is missing over here? The symbols. So 2H2 that is gas plus O2 that is gas produces 2H2O that is either gas or liquid this is dependent upon the or depending upon the temperature and pressure if the pressure is high and temperature is low it will be in liquid form and if both are not in moderate or if it they are vice versa it will be gaseous form that is water vapor now let's move to the next slide fine so here we will discuss as we have discussed in the various points for balancing that catalyst was there now we will discuss about that catalyst so this mno2 is manganese manganese dioxide so this mno2 is manganese dioxide which is a catalyst which is a catalyst also you can see here a delta symbol that is capital delta symbol what does this delta symbol means this means heat this delta symbol means heat 
So basically what we do, we write this MnO2 and this delta symbol or heat above and below the arrow. I will show you. But let's first solve this chemical equation by balancing. So this is potassium chlorate. This is potassium chloride and this is oxygen evolved. So as you can see, oxygen is 3 in number here, oxygen is 2 in number here. Now how we will solve this? 3 into 2, 6. 2 into 3, 6. So let's put 3 in front of this oxygen. So it's becoming 3 into 2, 6. Similarly, if we put 2 in front of 2, oh, wait, if we put 2 in front of this, KClO3, what it becomes? C. This 2 into oxygen's subscript 3, right? So 3 into 2 becomes 6. 6. So both sides, the oxygen has been balanced. Both sides we get the number of oxygen atoms is 6. Now, let me erase all this. Now see here, we, were, uh, we have written here 3 and here 2. So oxygen was balanced, 3 into 2, 6, here also 3 into 2, 6. But see, when we write this 2 as the stoichiometric coefficient, definitely the Cl and the K also have 1 in the subscript. So uh, how many? Potassium atoms or K atoms are there in this left hand side 2 C 2 K and chlorine 2 chlorine atoms. So definitely we have to balance this side also. We will put a 2 in front of it. See the potassium also becoming 2 atoms. Calcium also is 2 atoms. So ultimately the reaction is balanced. What is left to put the symbols. So let's do it. See KClO3, it is solid. Now what we were doing? MnO2. That is manganese dioxide we were using which is the catalyst and heat. Okay, manganese dioxide the catalyst and heat we were using. That is delta means heat. So it, it's producing KCl which is also a white solid. Along with that, oxygen gas. And this is the balancing. So finally, it's done. Thanks for watching. And we will solve more balance, uh, more equations for balancing in the next part. Thank you for watching.